Perfect. <laughs> Hello, everybody, it's me. Uh, your old Papa Palpy. I'm down in the basement again because I found this. It's a cassette player. See that? Now, I've been trying to um, uh, get something to play on here and, well, uh, Nat King Cole was uh, broken. I tried to repair it. I tried. You get to go over by where Dave is. Where did I get this? I have all my teeth. It's for dentures. Zinc free. It says it right there, zinc free. It also just says free? <laughs> it just says free. What does that mean? It says zinc free, no artificial flavors or colors, uh, free, ooze control tip. I wish I had an ooze control tip. Made in Ireland? What? Oh. I think it's time for a coffee break. R2. They've done everything with R2. They've made him into a cassette player. And I have an R2 that is a, a piggy bank. There's an R2 that's a sticker. There's an R2 that's a telephone. Let me go get the one that's a telephone. Wait, I don't think I should. <laughs> it's kind of entrenched. I can't get to it. <laughs> While I make coffee, actually no, it's gonna take too long to make coffee. I'm gonna run some water through the coffee maker and I'm gonna try my instant coffee. This might be a disaster, but I have some things I wanna talk about. So in order to make coffee time work, we're going to need our instruments. You're gonna have to move aside. There you go. Here's coffee. Instant coffee. Ah, this is about where my expertise ends. Instant creamer. <laughs> How does this work? I think it works exactly the same way as the coffee does, but I'm not so certain. Oh yeah, also, water. My purifying agent, because I know for a fact that instant coffee is a bit unsavory, uh, purely because it tastes... Well, it tastes the way that motor oil smells. <laughs> Ooh, that's a acquired taste. The history of instant coffee is uh, fascinating. One of the earliest examples of instant coffee was from the American Civil War. And it was apparently so unpalatable to like the people who were eating like the rations of the Civil War era where like everything is so salted or everything is just incredibly bland tasting. And these soldiers, the Union side who had this instant coffee stuff, um, absolutely hated it. And it's not like today's instant coffee. Um, I don't even know how they made that instant coffee. That looks good. They liken the flavor and consistency to axle grease. But yeah, it's basically good to go. I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's a weird dynamic with these instant stuff. Uh, coffee time, you know, if you want to like have coffee on the road but you don't want to stop anywhere and you want to make the coffee as just like rocket fuel as you want um you can totally just like keep on adding teaspoon and teaspoon and teaspoon of coffee it'll be so nasty let's try it shall we oh yeah just tasting the implement oh yeah 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 all right that 
Okay, good. Good thing I got water on hand. Death coffee! And now we have the taste test. Alright, so how does this... Man, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> Gotta hype myself up. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Hooey! Um, you wanna do this? Go to your grandparents' house and uh, get some of this stuff. They have to have instant coffee. Instant coffee is like one of the most grandparent thing I can think of. Ah, oh, the taste really latches onto your tongue. The, the taste is good. And it's making the coffee cup dirty. Wow. This stuff is good. Whoa. <laughs> oh. It's nobody's fault. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, that's on to the side. I wanted to listen to cassette tapes today and poor Nat King Cole got destroyed. I have a backup. That's my backup. <laughs> and it's only because I want to test if this thing works. I put batteries in it and I haven't played it yet, so. But it's a real beauty. Alright, here's the play button. It's playing it. It sounds like it is running, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem to want to run. That doesn't sound normal. And it looks like it's moved tape. Oh, I think it's broken. <laughs> I have another tape player. I think they still sell this tape player somewhere, but um. But it's not playing. Oh, there's no, there's no batteries. I remember I put four batteries in here. That looks like it needs four batteries, so... I guess I'm gonna take you out. Oh sweet, okay. This is side two. I want side one. Oh my god, it works. Uh oh. Now wait a minute. You is it, this is not still the dinner show, is it? Now you were in the dinner show. How did you get in here again? <laughs> All right, so that's Bill Cosby, everybody. What else we got? I have a tape here. I have this blank tape. I don't know what it's gonna play, so uh, God's sake, I hope it doesn't play like scary stuff. Oh. It had been played all the way through. Okay, well, I guess that's gonna be rewinding for a bit. What about you? Do these fit on you? No, they don't? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> he looks way less creepy. Sunglasses make everyone look better. <laughs> Oh, Dave is styling now, even though he's constantly looking at the floor. <laughs> it's almost done. Oh, it's done!
Um. Okay. Um. Okay. I think I'm about to do something that you should never do, and that is reveal your deepest fears. <laughs> One of my fears, and it's not really anything in specific, it's, I don't know how to say it, right? Well, let's start off the basics. When I was a youngster, I used to be very afraid of the dark, and I still kinda am to an extent, but more of like a thing of paranoia, not outright fear, right? I finished playing a game called uh, Subnautica not too very long ago. I reopened a very old wound of, uh, my actual fear of the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Palpy's a, an actual landlubber. Loves to be on land. There's a lot of stuff on land, but if you want to go in the ocean, my god, I don't know, I, we don't even know what's really out there. I don't know where it started. Where did it start? Because usually there's like something that cause in like a fear or a phobia or whatever, right? Whether it be video games or movies or books or real life experiences or a mixture of all of them, right? I don't know what, which one would be the first one? I remember there's a couple of things that really spooked me when I was a youngster, and one of that was the movie Jaws, but that terrifies a lot of people. I'm not particularly afraid of sharks, because I know there's way creepier things out there. Sharks are just, you know, the bear of the ocean, really. Ugh. There was a bunch of Goosebumps books. Now, I never really read too many of the Goosebumps books. The Goosebumps, like, TV show. I saw more episodes for the TV show and I can only recollect like five episodes and they were all like the worst. They were the worst adaptations of some of R.L. Stein's worst Goosebumps books. At my local grocery store during the Halloween season there would be this tiny little section that would open up near like the junk food aisle. One of them. There's like billions of them. Might as well be every aisle in an American supermarket but there was one that would have like like about the length of this table there would be a little section of Halloween stuff there would be like these uh, little bags of pretzels there would be this really cheap soda that would only come out seasonally it was basically purple Fanta but it tasted worse like I don't know how you managed that there was also scary movies for you know kids and there was Goosebumps DVDs and that's where I got a lot of them and they always had two episodes on them and they also had that the book, the art from the books on them for each episode. So there was, I had two. There was Shocker on Shock Street, which I don't even remember what the plot of it was. I think it was um, two kids get trapped in like a relative's theme park that he works on. He's like animatronics and it's like horror themed or something. And then the big twist at the end of it is that the two kids were also animatronics. That stuff will mess a kid up, you know? <laughs> Like, what if I'm an animatronic if my parents aren't telling me? You know, a lot of R.L. Stein books had that kind of twist. Like, there was one where, oh, my family, my family has vampires in the basement. And then the big twist is that the parents know about it and that they're vampires too. And the kids are also vampires. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I like that twist. That's, that's creative to a kid because the kid would have never thought about that. Sometimes the scariest part of the Goosebumps books was the cover. The covers are always really well done. They never really scared me. There's only a couple of ones that really get to me. There's like two. There's two books that are, are about the ocean and they also, of course, they have sea monsters in them. That's a gas for me <laughs> because I immediately like, oh yeah, this is, this is top-notch horror. I don't like the ocean. There's one where it's like a diver and there's like this orca hammerhead shark hybrid on it and then there's the second one and it's just this really weird looking piranha thing with like big bug eyes just like looking right at you <laughs> i'm gonna drink more coffee now <laughs> ah! oh man oh that'll put hair in your nostrils Ooh. okay what was i talking about but i remember that being a little bit spooky but there was another wii game and this game isn't even a horror game it's a it's a 
diving game. It's called Endless Ocean, and I played the second one because I'm a weirdo, and I always play the second game first. Uh, it's a marine wildlife um, adventure game, and I don't even remember the plot, but I remember parts of it just like I, I I went as fast as I could through that game there's a bunch of maps right and you can go between them and there's a lot of exploration there's a lot of cool stuff in there there's like uh, you catalog every single fish or whatever you find uh, there's coin collections where you find coins everywhere there's scavenging that part of the game was really cool the uh, the maps were the first one was I think it was called like got em up Adol, Gitama, whatever. It's in the South Pacific. The second one is the Aegean Sea. I don't know where the Aegean Sea is. I think it's in the Mediterranean. And that one has ship graveyards in it. And for some reason, this messed me up, is for some reason, the, the shipwrecks constantly, constantly make wood creaking noises. I am losing my mind. Like, this game is the scariest game ever, but it's a Nintendo game, and it's meant for children. <laughs> there are children's games out there that are like, and same thing with children's movies that like, scar kids, which is really funny. This ocean diving game was another part of my childhood. I never beat it. I got to the final area and didn't know what to do. You do a lot of world traveling because you go from all over the place, from the South Pacific to the Mediterranean to the Weddell Sea, up in the north coast of Canada, which is another level that messed with me because there's no sea floor. <laughs> you can't, you look down and there's just blackness. That doesn't make me feel good at all. You go into the Amazon, Cortica River, and then there's the Red Sea. I think it's the Red Sea. It's off the coast of Egypt somewhere. That one's got the Abyssal Trench. Uh, that one's got the giant squid. And the giant squid's perfectly harmless. Uh, they play it up to be harm, like, very dangerous. And I think they are very dangerous, but they're, you know, it's it's a squid. It's kind of stupid. But there's also, uh, what are they called? They're blunt nose six gill sharks. Now, it's not like there isn't any danger. It's as in, it's a kid's game because there are a lot of predators in the game that are very dangerous to you. But the weird thing is they don't take bites out of you. And it's kind of anticlimactic because there are sharks of all kinds in that game. There's Greenland sharks, great white sharks, tiger sharks, blue sharks. Uh, the six skill sharks all sorts of sharks in this game all they do is they get up to you and they tail whip you they turn around and whip you with their tails and say you know good old jaws this is the thing that messes with you is that there's a little triangle a little triangle like warning sign you'd see on a road and in the middle of it is like the icon of whatever is coming at you it's playing a little alarm sound it's a very subtle but it just keeps getting faster <laughs> I think the last thing I did in the game because I couldn't get past the uh, the final bit. There are missions you have to do, right? And there's this one mission. It's in the Mediterranean, the Aegean Sea. Wherever the Aegean Sea is, there are these seals. Um, I don't know what type of seals they are, but they're just, you know, and they have to cure them. And you cure them with this gun. It's called a pulsar. Now, I don't know what a pulsar is, right? What the pulsar does in the game, though, is pacify aggressive animals and heal sick animals, right? And so you get this one mission where you have to uh, heal all these sick animals. And they're seals. And there's like 8 or 11 of them. And you have to, you know, go through different spots of interest and help the seals out but then there's the final two or final one seal all right every single map has the area where you're not supposed to go where it's just like open water and there's the predators out there and i'm like okay i don't i don't think i want to do this mission anymore because you know there's the shallow like 50 meter deep it's flat and it's even and it's shallow and it goes whoa and it's open ocean out there and you see it, you barely see it. There's a seal and it's just swimming around in a circle. And then way out there, even further than that, you can see the silhouettes of great white sharks. And I'm like, screw you. I'm not going over there. That seal is a trap. You see these? <laughs> this stuff. What is going on here? Freaky illustrations like these like they're just being honest, you know, like there's stuff out there that just looks like this You got like all sorts of weird weird creatures. It's cool 
you're, you don't even know what's going on. Like, what are these creatures? Like, we have fossils for all of these, right? Yeah, I think we do. What is that thing with the pinchy pinchers? What is that? Uh, I don't know what to think. What on earth is that face? What is that? I don't get it. What's going on here? What I'm saying is sea monsters are real. Or equious. Oh, uh, here's the fun stuff. They had to make a lot of pictures to prove that this stuff is real. Look at that guy. Really ghostly. Oh, uh, yeah, here's, um, here's another one that... Woo, look at that! The perspective is all messed up, but this one is what messed with little Palpy when he was a kid. Is all these bizarre looking sea creatures at the bottom. We're like, okay, I get it. I get it. And then you turn the page in nightmares. <laughs> I don't like these. I don't like sea life. Sea life needs to get out of my life. The shallows. Look, there's a crab. You like crabs? People really like crabs for some reason. I don't get it. There's another crab. Why are there so many crabs? Crab? Crab? There's another crab. Crabs are stupid. <laughs> Those are, uh, sea slugs. Sea slugs are also really stupid. That thing just looks like a spider. Like, you can just look at this stuff for hours and just keep on finding new stuff. You know, like, what is this? What is that? I don't know what that is. Like, some scientist has to know what is going on here. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that picture right there. A sooty turn chick stands forlornly on the beach waiting for its parents to return from their daily hunting trip at sea. Look at that. I could frame that and put it on my wall. It'd be like perfect artwork. Look at that. <laughs> Whoever took that picture is a genius. Underwater world of reefs. I thought we already went through this. When will I get to see the sharks? There's like some form of um, fish that looks exactly like this one. I think it's like a stone. It's like a stonefish or something. And it is like... I don't... I just don't go into the ocean, man. Um, they're like got poisonous spines on them. And like people step on them all the time. Where did you come from? See that? That's a Chinese Santa Claus. China doesn't believe in Santa Claus.